Welcome. In this video, we'll be focusing on function notation, linear functions part two. Let's take a look at our first example. Example one, given f of x is equal to two times x minus three, find f of negative nine. In this case, we're going to find the value of f of negative nine in two different ways. Let's take a look at the first approach. First, we identify here that we have that the input is x. And the output for the function is 2 times x minus 3. So let's describe what's going on. Method 1. Description. Well, the first thing we're going to do is to pick a number. Let's call it x. Now, notice that since we have x, the first thing we're going to do to x is to subtract 3. So let's write that down. And thus we get the x minus 3. And the last thing we're going to do is to multiply that by 2. So then we get 2 times x minus 3 which is really what's going on with this function. So in the case that we're given f of negative 9, we're given a very specific value for x, which is negative 9. Now, we are not going to just pick any number, but instead we say, well, we picked negative 9 already. The first thing we're going to do to that negative 9 is to subtract 3. So we get negative 9 minus 3, which will give you negative 12. Then you're going to multiply that by 2. So we have 2 times negative 12. That gives us negative 24. Therefore, we can say that f of negative 9 is equal to negative 24. So that's our first method, when we're actually using the description of the process to figure out what f of negative 9 is. But we also have method 2. which is substituting in the value directly. So we call this the substitution method. So what we do, we write f of negative 9, and we're going to substitute in the negative 9 for x into the original expression that is given for the function. So we have 2 times, instead of x, we write negative 9 minus 3. Now, we follow the order of operations, so we get that f of negative 9 is equal to 2 times negative 12, because negative 9 minus 3 gives you negative 12. And then we multiply these two numbers, so we have that f of negative 9 is equal to negative 24. Notice how, regardless of which method we use, we get the same value for f of negative 9. Now, as part of an extension, we can say that we have the point with coordinates x, y, but in this case, x is your negative 9 and your y is your negative 24, since the input was negative 9 and the corresponding output is negative 24. Let's take a look at another example. Example 2, given g of x is equal to negative 5 times x minus 3, find g of 4. So let's take a look at our first example, or our first method, method 1, which is description. So since the input is x and the output is simply negative 5 times x minus 3, we're going to be describing what we're doing to your input in order to get such output. So the first thing we do is to pick a number. And in this case, we call it x. Then notice that the next thing we're doing to your x is to subtract 3. So that's step 2, subtract 3. 
thus getting you x minus 3. And the last thing we're going to do to it is to multiply that by negative 5. So step 3, multiply by negative 5. Thus getting us negative 5 times x minus 3, which is expression on the right-hand side of this equal symbol. Now, in the given case of g of 4, we have a specific input. It's just not any number, but it's 4. So we're going to do the process to it and see what we get as the output. So we have a number 4. We're going to subtract 3 to it or from it. So we have 4 minus 3 is 1. And then we're going to take that result and multiply that by negative 5. So we have negative 5 times 1, which gives you negative 5. So we can say that g of 4 is equal to negative 5. So that's the value using method 1. Now let's use method 2, substitution. So what we're going to do in terms of substitution is uh, to substitute in directly the value of 4 wherever we see an x. So we have g of 4 is equal to negative 5 times, instead of x, we have 4, and then minus 3. Now, following the order of operations, we have that g of 4 is equal to negative 5 times 4 minus 3, which is 1. Okay, remember, we do the parentheses first. And we get that g of 4 is equal to uh, negative 5 times 1, which is negative 5. Once again, notice that regardless of which method we use, we obtain the same value for g of 4. And as part of our extension, we can say that we have the point with coordinates four comma negative five. Okay, why do we get four comma negative five? Because the input or the x value is four, and your output or y value is negative five. Let's take a look at one last example. Example 3. Given h of x is equal to the opposite of x minus 5, find h of negative 7. Again, let's use our two methods. So method 1, description. Well, since we know that the input in here is x and the corresponding output is the opposite of x minus 5, we can describe what's going on. So initially, we picked a number. And we have called that number x. The next thing we're going to do to your x is to subtract 5. So that's a step 2, subtract 5. That's getting you x minus 5. And the third step is to take the opposite. Remember, another uh, name or synonym for opposite is additive inverse. That's getting you the opposite of x minus 5. Now, in this case, we have a specific input of negative 7. So that's our number. So let's go through the process um, with negative 7 as our starting value. So instead of any just given number, we say that number is negative 7. Then we're going to subtract 5 from it. So we have negative 7 minus 5, thus getting negative 12. And the last thing we're going to do is to take the opposite which is the opposite of negative 12, it's simply 12. Therefore, we can say that h of negative 7 is equal to 12. Now, that's using method 1. Let's go ahead and use method 2, substitution. So what we're going to do, we're going to replace every single x with the given input. And then we're going to evaluate. So we have h of negative 7 is equal to, notice we have the opposite, 
we open the parentheses, then instead of x, we're going to write negative 7, then minus 5, and close our parentheses. Now, using the order of operations, we're going to evaluate what's inside of the parentheses first. So we have h of negative 7 is equal to the opposite of negative 7 minus 5, which is negative 12. Now we take the opposite of negative 12, and we get that h of negative 7 is equal to positive 12. Therefore, we get that h of negative 7 is equal to 12, regardless of which method we use. Now, as part of our extension, we can say that we have a point with coordinates negative 7, comma 12. And this finishes up this video on function notation, linear functions, part 2. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.